And we begin with the continued cleanup on aisle five at CNN in the wake of widespread criticism over its decision to air a town hall with the twice impeached, civilly liable for sexual abuse former President Donald Trump on Wednesday night that played out more like a pep rally or a MAGA version of the Jerry Springer show. On Thursday, CNN CEO Chris Licht mounted a defense of the town hall during the network's morning editorial call, insisting the spectacle served the public well, despite the widespread condemnation, even from CNN's own media reporter. I am aware that there has been uh, people with opinions uh, slash backlash, and that is absolutely uh, expected. And I will say this as clearly as I possibly can. Uh, you do not have to like uh, the former president's uh, answers, but you can't say that we didn't get them. Um, Caitlin pressed them again and again and made news, made a lot of news. While we all may have been uncomfortable hearing people clapping, that was also an important part of the story because the people in that audience represent a large swath of America. And the mistake uh, the media made in the past is ignoring that those people exist. That tape was obtained by FTV Live, a media website. And I should note that we have not obtained the audio recording ourselves, but it matches the multiple media reports that we had yesterday. Hours after that call, CNN anchor Anderson Cooper essentially repeated his boss's argument on his show, scolding his own viewers in what even some former CNN anchors like Sonny Hostin described as gaslighting. That man you were so upset to hear from last night, he may be president of the United States in less than two years. And that audience that upset you, that's a sampling of about half the country. They are your family members, your neighbors, and they are voting. And many said they're voting for him. Now, maybe you haven't been paying attention to him since he left office. Maybe you've been enjoying not hearing from him, thinking it can't happen again. Some investigation is gonna stop him. Well, it hasn't so far. So if last night showed anything, it showed it can happen again. Now, that is what you call a straw man argument, especially that the, the only two options available to you are listening to a former president mock a woman a jury found that he sexually abused while the audience laughs and applauds or pretending 74 million Americans who voted for Trump don't exist. But that has become a familiar tune, mainly from billionaire libertarians like Elon Musk and billionaire media moguls like Fox's Rupert Murdoch, that free speech doesn't just mean what the First Amendment says it means, that the government cannot restrict or require certain speech, but rather that unless you are willing to subject yourself personally to the farthest right, most virulently racist, misogynistic and offensive viewpoints, just fill your psyche with it online, in the university lecture hall or on CNN, you're against free speech. Ditto John Malone, the billionaire investor who owns large chunks of Warner Brothers Discovery, which is CNN's parent company. He made his fortune buying up media companies. Al Gore, yes, the former vice president, called him Darth Vader from the Senate floor as he gobbled up small media companies. He's very close with the CEO of Warner Brothers Discovery, David Zaslav. He's also an unabashed conservative slash libertarian and a large donor to Donald Trump's 2017 inaugural committee. In November 2021, as he was acquiring CNN, he told CNBC exactly what he would like to see for the cable news network that Ted Turner started. I would like to see CNN evolve back to the kind of journalism that it started with and, uh, you know, actually have journalists, which would be unique and refreshing. Fox News, I think, in my opinion, uh, has followed a, a, uh, an interesting trajectory of trying to have news news, I mean, some actual journalism embedded in, in a program schedule of all opinions. Ah, oh, Dominion would like to have a word. I mean, this right-wing libertarian viewpoint that the rest of us must subject ourselves to verbal abuse by the nastiest, cruelest, most hideous voices in this country, Donald Trump included, has become the backbone of MAGA. Free speech to them means that the fascist far right has a God-given right to make you listen to them on Twitter or on the new cable Twitter, whether you want to or not. And if you turn away or you walk away or complain, there's something wrong with you. But here's the thing. 
It is, in fact, possible to know about the views of the far right, to understand that those views exist and are held by millions and millions of your fellow Americans, even by a third or maybe even half of American adults, without having to subject yourself to them. We didn't need a Trump pep rally on CNN to understand what Trump is. He literally posts his garbage views on his fake Twitter every day, and every media outlet reports on it. He has rallies where he dishes out his gross insults with cameras watching. We get it. A lot of people like it and vote for it. But we don't need CNN or John Malone or Elon Musk or Anderson Cooper to lecture us about how we should be forced to endure it or that we should just get used to it. Because some of us actually know that that stuff is wrong and that American politics and American democracy deserve better. Joining me now is Jelani Cobb, Dean of the Columbia Journalism School and a staff writer at The New Yorker, and Angelo Carasone, president of Media Matters. And I just want the two of you to ruminate for a moment on John Malone saying that he thinks that real news is Fox, right? So he starts from the viewpoint that the center is Fox, the, the one's dominion. Uh, just sued and got $787 million for because they literally made up an entire news um, sort of a cycle that they didn't even believe. So let's go to this for just a second. I want to start with you, Jelani, because this is the challenge, right? When people are resetting what the center is and saying Fox is it, John Malone in 2017 told the Financial Times, Rupert Murdoch is sort of like I am. He's a libertarian, but he thinks we should have a strong military and the U.S. needs Fox News or something like it because otherwise everything else is leftist. He donated a quarter of a million dollars to Trump's inaugural fund. He contributed to Trump's Save America PAC. He told CNBC in 2019, quote, I think a lot of the things Trump has tried to do identifying problems and trying to solve them has been great. I just don't think he's the right guy to do it. He once tried to recruit Rush Limbaugh to be a host on Fox, and he's a former member of the Libertarian Cato Institute. When I put all that together, when he says the center and what is real journalism is Fox, you, as a journalism professor and dean of Columbia Law School, how does that hit you? Yeah, I think that's very difficult to um, to reconcile. And you know, the fact of it is that you know we saw the backlash that the Fox News reporter um, confronted. You know, for reporting that Joe Biden had won the election, uh, and that you know this is actually reporting the truth, <laughs> the factual, accurate truth uh, that culminated in backlashes. We've seen uh, all the language that came out of Fox News's own anchors' mouths and in their text messages about how they viewed the information that they were putting on the air not to be factual or accurate, and so uh, you know. That's deeply, I think that's an indefensible statement. Uh, but more fundamentally, the, you know, the problem is that when people say they want to get back to having, you know, journalists, CNN, the thing that made CNN the most respected uh, name that they had, you know, was the fact that they had journalists around the world covering news uh, at great risk to themselves. You know, I'm, I know I'm on MSNBC. I will say that. Mm -hmm. CNN did commendable work in Ukraine, amazing I work agree. in Ukraine. And so what are you calling those people? What are you calling the <laughs> CNN reporters who've been killed or been, been injured in, in the line of work? What exactly is your standard for calling someone a journalist? I, I just don't think that that statement is, is at all uh, accurate or defensible.